Installing the Note to Chords device is quick and easy. You can just drag and drop the single file, the single max for life file into your user library if you want to and then it's stored there. If you want to use the presets, you need to double click on the AOP file. It will ask you where the content should be unpacked. So I usually use um, a dedicated folder, folder for all my ALP contents. Just open it there so it's gonna get unpacked in there. And then I have added this folder to my places. So now I'm able to open the presets from within the live browser. Before we're gonna have a look on the presets, let's look on the device first. So we can open the device now from the user library and let's uh, delete the different tracks here. So just we have a nice clean set and we need some sounds obviously. So I'm taking the grand piano or grand piano depending on where you're from. Okay, so um, we can add up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chords in one device here. And we need to activate one row by the first button in each row here. So um, we have the trigger notes in the beginning and uh, many people are getting confused here because this uh, is showing a pitch, but it's actually not being played this pitch. This pitch here is just for triggering the whole row. So you can set this up by uh, via your keyboard or via your mouse, drag and drop up and down. Or you can press S here. And now it's waiting for a MIDI note to come in. And if I press a MIDI note or if I put in a MIDI note, this could be a drum pad, a, a push or a MIDI controller, any MIDI controller which is sending MIDI notes here can be used. So now my C3 is mapped to trigger this whole row here and you don't hear anything because it's just a trigger pitch. So um, let's set this up to something like C4. So now I need to activate, or I can activate up to eight nodes in this row here to be triggered, to be played. So for example, if I um, select C3 here, now I'm getting a C3, one note. And let's say I want to play a C major chord, so I can select major in the scale section here and you can see all the other pitches are changing to the scale. So if I want to see major scale, I need the third and the fifth note here to be activated. And you can hear it's velocity responsive at this point. So this way you can easily set up different chord progressions here yourself if you want to. So let's have a look on the velocity import section here, uh, the velocity section here. So this would mean um, you can set up different modes for the velocity here. You, ha you have four different modes. The live velocity, meaning like the velocity which is being played live you have um, and you can set this up for the whole world you can set up a fixed velocity so if you want the chord to be played at a certain uh, velocity value here and no matter how hard or how soft I'm playing this trigger note here the chord is being fixed or all notes are being fixed to their values in here. On note velocity goes from one up to 127. So 127 is the loudest and one would be the quietest. Okay, so you have a plus and minus section here as well, which would mean um, the live velocity coming in uh, will get added a certain value or will be subtracted a certain value. So let's say we want the C3 louder here because it's a trigger note. Um, it's a root note, sorry. It's a root note and the other notes should be quieter. So the live velocity is used and this value here will be added or subtracted to it. Okay, so the 
last one will be a random uh, section here and you can see you will get two fields for each node so that that would mean um, you will create a random or a random value between those two fields here or those two values uh, will be created so now the c3 will um, get a, value, a random value between 60 and 110 and let's set those up a bit lower the other ones so you can hear now that there will be some movement and the c3 is still the loudest in most cases yeah because it was set up to 60 so if you set this up higher c3 always will, will be the loudest because it's higher than the maximum values of the other two notes okay so you might want to have this case where you want to play chords with your left hand and you want to play melodies with your right hand or if you have two different tracks where you're sending your push in or a different MIDI note from a mo MIDI note from a different controller and you might not want all notes to be going through so you can set this up here if you want non trigger notes to go through or not so if i'm now playing no now note is coming through if i have this activated all notes are going through just the trigger note will be transposed to um, the row which is which it is triggering okay so sometimes you have chords already in a midi clip so let's say from a midi pack you bought or some stock chords from the ableton live core library um, let's just put in some chords and let me show you how quickly you can actually put those in here as well so nice metronome if i put in some chords So now I have those three chords in here. In a MIDI clip, I have five notes for each chord and I can quickly import those into the device. So I need to select the notes I want to import and go to the track view again. Let's switch on the device. We got three chords here, so I'm gonna activate three rows and i have a get button for each row and if you just look on the notes here the pitches are being changed to the notes i'm inputting here so uh, let's before we do this for all other rows here as well we have and that's really important for co for chords to sound nice we have the different velocity values of each note here and we want those to be imported as well so we need to switch on the velocity import velo import for those as well and we need to set um, the velocity mode here to fixed so we're actually importing all those um, velocity values and have them all always played so if i'm now pressing get you can see the velocity values are changing to the imported notes here so let's do this with the second chord um, select all the notes click on get i need to switch on um, the five notes obviously here because i have five notes now for each chord let's do this for the third bar here a third row here as well let's press get and now i need to set up my trigger <clears throat> notes here let's pick c4 is okay let's pick c sharp 4 for the second chord and d4 for the next one so now ah and i selected the wrong chord here let's do this right third chord selected and now get different root note 
Nice, cool. So this way you can easily set up um, import co chords, create your own presets, etc., and then store those, save those in your use library or within your Ableton live set. So let's have a look on the presets um, and play those with a push controller. So um, if you open up the preset folder here, you have to um, open up the view for the ALS file and then you have all the different stocked groups of presets here. So let's open up Jazzy and the loading will take a little bit um, on the first time. So once the chords are loaded, um, you need to have an instrument here uh, on the same track, obviously. And you are now able, if you have the device selected, um, to change the pitch, the chord progression, and the notes through function here for all devices via those macros. And obviously those macros are being shown on your push as well on the for the th first three encoders so now you're able to play those presets if your push is set to a c1 starting at a c1 and set to chromatic so that you get c1 c sharp 1 d1 and so on and so forth And obviously you can now use your encoders to cycle or to select different progressions. And some progressions will have um, five notes, some will have four notes, so this is one with five. And this way you are um, able to quickly find some new nice chords here. You can change the pitch here as well. So let's say you want the whole sequence to be a bit higher. You can set this up uh, with a pitch via the first macro here. And obviously you are able to do this with a different controller, MIDI controller here as well. Oops, just go into the MIDI map menu, select the macros, map the macros, and then you are able to set this up via your, um, or to change the selection here via a different MIDI controller. Yeah, this way um, you can use any MIDI controller sending MIDI notes or sending MIDI control change data for the macros, for the notes, you would need notes, MIDI notes, obviously. So if you want to trigger those three different chords with, let's say, one pad from your drum, e-drum, or from your push, or from a different MIDI controller, you can do this with the second device which of mine, which is called the Melody Trigger. So um, here is one older version of it. So you can put this in front of the note to chords device and set up the notes you want to have. And it needs to be in front of the device here. And let's put it in the front, bam. And now we need to create those three notes here with the first device. So we actually just need three notes in the sequence here set this to three um let's switch on the velocity values and let's set those to um c4 we were starting c4 c sharp 4 double click and d4 so now those three notes are being created and they go and they will trigger those um, chords via the note to chord device here now. Quite a hard velocity. Let's set up the note duration a bit longer. 
Yeah, and now I can set up a different note for that just to cycle through. And I have some options here to go back as well or to pick a random. Yeah, three notes, so not so much randomness here, but you get the picture. You can set those up for being triggered by external MIDI notes here as well. Okay, have fun with the note to chord device. Um, it's always exciting for me to see what people are coming up with. So if you do some stuff with it, I would love to see some videos and a link to the device obviously um, would be nice as well. Have fun making music and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.